Out of all the machines that are supposed to be good, Behemoth is probably the most disappointing. I mean, by this point, it's even lost to the floor. <laughs> oh, Mr. Psycho, your reviews are as harsh as they are fair. Stephen, Stephen, what? The new series of Robot Wars is on. Come on, it's on. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Go <laughs> well, watch it. Make a review. Come on. How 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 live are your reviews? Extremely. Now hurry up. Get out of here. Go. Ah, oh, he calls himself a Robot Wars fan. Come on, Matilda. You gotta do better than that. Hello everyone, I am Mr. Psycho, Robot Wars. Yeah, 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 go on, get out of here. Hello YouTube viewers and random Robot Wars fans. Oh, I feel so good to be saying that again and welcome along to my reviews of the 10th Wars. Funnily enough, we're kicking off with Heat A. So without further ado, let's meet this week's victims, uh, uh, contestants. Let's meet this week's contestants. Yeah. Apollo is pretty much still the exact same robot. The only real difference this time is they've made some minor changes internally. Also, they have a brand new chassis as well, and let's be honest, they need a new one. Look at the amount of damage they took from Carbide and Aftershock last year. The armor has been laser cut, and it's thicker than before, while it also incorporates a new drive system, taking them from 12 mile an hour to 20 mile an hour, and 2 horsepower to 22 horsepower. They're also using gearboxes instead of chains now, and of course the flipper has been replumbed to increase flow, making them fast more maneuverable and giving them a much more powerful weapon. The team R is always a lot of fun and I really do appreciate the little touches like adding those LEDs inside those new vents on the sides gives the machine a little bit of character and personality. When I first saw Apocalypse in the Pits, I really thought this was some new version of a machine by Team Ivanhoe. It looked like an updated Splinter from the Fifth Wars in Extreme 1 with those grabbing arms on the side and that axe on the top. I do quite like this design as it could be a very effective way to fight spinners, these days anyway. Yeah, any excuse to show that fight. Apocalypse could grapple them with the claws, ram them into a sidewall, and then just start smashing down on the top panel using the axe, but it all depends on the speed of the robot and driving to get the opponent before they get a chance to spin up. And funnily enough, this machine does have some links to our current UK champion, Carbide. The robot is entered by Team Asgard, who had previously won the pilot episode in 2016 with Turbulence, and Dave Moulds from Carbide is the original builder of Turbulence. That morphed into the first version of Apocalypse, which had a flipper, but was later updated to include an axe. They fought in live events without the claws, which were added for TV. And speaking of weapons, Apocalypse has also competed with a spinner on the end of the hammer too. The Swarm is a brand new robot, or should that be robots? Yes, robots. It's a brand new entry from the Bigger Brother and Orte team, and it's a little bit of a shame that we haven't seen Orte again since its dismal appearance in Series 8. I've seen them at a live event, and it's a very impressive flipper, but they're still unfortunately plagued by a few technical issues. I like the idea behind the anti-spinner and the multitude of weapons on Swarm, but I'm not sure how effective they planned the weapons to be, as all four are essentially lightweight robots going up against heavyweights. Behemoth is Robot Wars royalty as far as I'm concerned, although the jury is still out on how to actually pronounce their name. Behemoth? 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 It's now officially the longest serving robot, having appeared since the Second Wars. It would be nice to see Eat Me I'm Done written on the scoop again for old time's sake, and to celebrate the machine being around for so long. I'm glad to see the axe on top back again as first seen in Extreme, but it's modular now so it can be removed. They used it against Stinger where it was most effective and works much better as a grabber than the setup they put together last year. In fact, let's never mention that again. In the end, it's just not Robot Wars, unless Behemoth is involved. Donald Thump is a new robot from a team experienced with live events, but also has tenuous links to the classic show machine Leveler 2, who lost to Tornado in the second round of the Seventh Wars. Team Ballistics took over Leveler and competed with it in live events, and Donald Thump is a brand new machine from that team, which also competed in live events, but sadly without the spinner. Now, I really like Donald Thumb. The robot's not too bad, but it gets easily outshined by how fun and how engaging the team are. <laughs> the captain was a lot of fun with his spot-on Trump impression and the touch of using the Make Robot Wars Great Again hats. A lot of roboteers kind of find some issues with the welding on the chassis and seem more of a joke robot, but the spinning bar is actually quite impressive. 
And finally, we have the Pray For Gabe meme creator that is Sabretooth. This new version pretty much looks like the Series 9 version, but with all the faults, all the slight issues of it from last year, just nailed down. This is a beautiful looking robot this time around. It's sleeker and better designed to be invertible. Gabe and the team have constantly produced great looking machines over the years, more or less, and the Series 10 model has to be the best one yet. But they definitely know how to create one devastating spinner. The 9000 RPM spinning speeds of Sabretooth's flywheel at the time of the Seventh Wars still holds the record for the fastest spinner in UK Robot Wars. That just shows the level of power that Sabretooth is capable of and what the arena faces now. Alrighty, so that's the history lesson out of the way. Let's get into the fight analysis. Donald Thump backed away to get the spinning bar up to speed, leaving Behemoth to attack Sabretooth. Sabretooth dodged the attack and got a side hit in on Behemoth, which showed good control, but it didn't damage Behemoth and instead flipped it over, which Behemoth easily recovered from. Donald Thump made a charge, but ended up at the arena wall, which didn't show much control. Likewise, Behemoth did the same by driving onto the floor flipper and getting tossed. Donald Thump then damaged Sabretooth by clipping their side armor and bending it up so some aggression points go to them. Behemoth also ran into Donald Thump's blade at full speed and withstood the attack. I'm not sure what happened to Donald Thump, but they took a hit from Sabretooth and spun away, and the next time we saw them, they were dead. Behemoth were very lucky in this battle, as that final hit from Sabretooth knocked out the removable link, but Sabretooth were thrown upside down and beached on that damaged side panel, meaning both were immobilised at the same time. Had that not happened, then Sabretooth would have been declared the winner, so it goes to show the level of luck involved in the competition. I think the judges gave the fight to Behemoth, as it was the more aggressive of the two, and it took less damage. Need I say more? Yeah. What? Yes, you do. I do? Oh, uh, okay. Apollo started the fight by charging into Swarm like a bowling ball knocking down pins. Apocalypse looked very sluggish and took a long time to get involved in the fight. The sidearms are quite weedy and ineffective too, while the axe wasn't working. You could tell that Dave from Apollo was making it his mission to get one of the cluster bots onto the arm and toss it over the sidewall as he constantly targeted them. After a few hits from Blenda, he threw pins it into SirKill.CPZ with great style. I was very impressed with Blenda, the spinning bar was very powerful, and managed to take a few chunks out of Apollo's armour. Apollo was also showing aggression by flipping Apocalypse, but they were more of a sitting duck by this point than one of the cluster bots. Apocalypse got wedged in the flame pit, and that was them out of it. Finally, Dave accomplished his mission by throwing Rubber Duck out of the arena over the high part of the wall, which was very entertaining. The rest of the fight was basically Apollo chasing down the rest of Swarm, and I did love seeing one of the cluster bots driving into the pit. To no one's surprise, this was an easy win for Apollo, but it makes it no less impressive that it could catch up to those little lightweights of Swarm. Now this was more like it. Apocalypse literally came out swinging by charging at their opponent and aggressively bringing the axe down, causing some damage to the inside housing of Sabretooth's drum. The side arms just did not work at all, which is a real shame as they had a chance to grab and control Sabretooth at that moment. But Apocalypse continued to be aggressive, ramming Sabretooth into the arena wall and the CPZ. Sabretooth activated the fog of war and once that cleared, the tide seemed to turn as Apocalypse seemed to have suddenly lost drive on one side. It was hilarious to see Gabe shouting his orders in the control booth because he knew they had a lot of work to do to make up points. Sabretooth got a great slam on Apocalypse, sending them into the arena wall which killed them, something which Gabe didn't notice as he was still instructing them to ram Apocalypse into the wall. Well this began well, didn't it, with Donald Thump's weapon cutting out right before the fight started. I could make a political joke here, but I'm, I'm, I'm just not smart enough. Donald Thump did go for the head-on charge, but couldn't really do anything to Swarm without the weapon moving. Blenda got some great impressive attacks in and managed to dislodge the front panels of Donald Thump. I'm still shocked at how effective this little spinner is. Donald Thump went for broke and activated the Rogue House Robot Hazard as that's all they really had left as an option. An issue I do have with Swarm is that aside from Blenda, the other machines can't really do anything. Rubber Duck tried to flip Donald Thump, but it barely managed to lift it, and Blenda delivered a final few hits and killed Donald Thump. And finally, proving how ineffective the rest of Swarm are, the fight ended with Sky feebly ramming into a very dead Donald Thump.
Apollo might be a little too fast for its own good as while they did manage to get a flip in on Sabretooth at the beginning of the fight, they had to swerve around after missing Sabretooth during the initial head-on attack and flip them at an awkward angle. You could see that Sabretooth were trying to avoid the flipper and attack Apollo from the back, which is a great tactic, as if they hit from the front they would be flipped, and if they hit from the side the drum wouldn't be able to catch Apollo's sloped side panels. Apollo missed an attack and flipped itself over, showing a lack of control, but Sabretooth seemed to panic at that point and didn't take advantage. Apollo were the more active an aggressive robot and kept Sabretooth running away and even got them into a CPZ more than once. Sabretooth were clearly panicking and didn't realise how close they were to the sidewall, which allowed Apollo to get them over the wall with another awkward flip. It was almost accidental, as Sabretooth ended up sort of perched on the wall before finally falling over and out. I have to say I was very underwhelmed with Sabretooth's new spinning drum. It worked more as a flipper rather than a spinner in its first battle. It would knock robots over, but it wouldn't cause the damage that we saw them do in the Ninth Wars. I like the tactic of the four cluster bots scattering away from each other after activate was called as it makes them less of a target. That seemed to work as Behemoth struggled to get an attack in on any of the little robots, but yet again the only one of the four to dish out any damage was Blenda, taking a small chunk out of the bucket scoop. Pins' his lipo then blew for some reason, probably because they were all using their energy to stay away from Behemoth. Behemoth then caught a hit from Matilda's flywheel, which they seemed to have made a recurring element in each of the revived series, but they showed great style in self-writing. Then the inevitable happened with Behemoth putting the scoop to good use and dumping one of the cluster bots out of the arena. The swarm is ultimately the perfect opponent for Behemoth to fight, as they can round up the small machines in the scoop and toss them out, so great control displayed there. To bring it to an end, Behemoth wrecks the two others left in the ring for the lols, and Rubber Duck breaks its flipper while slamming into Behemoth and sealing the Swarm's fate. Now I did really love the idea behind Swarm, but they never really worked together as a team, there wasn't a synergy there, also they weren't that effective aside from Blenda, so I would like to see the team come back with an updated heavyweight scale version of Blenda and see the amount of damage that that could do. Yeah, I mean, when you've got four robots to chase against, you have to kind of like pick your robot and keep an eye on whether one's going to be cheeky and come up your backside. <laughs> Sorry, Anthony, what was that? Keep an eye on whether one's going to be cheeky and come up your backside. Yeah, are you trying to get into the headlines again? Well, I suppose in all fairness, it's not exactly the first time we've had some unintentional innuendos in Robot Wars, and I suppose it won't be the last either. Uh, George gave me his rear end. I was going to lift my forks up and go through his back and take his internals out. Yeah. Sorry, George. <laughs> <laughs> the playoff for the 10-way began like a karate movie with the four smaller robots fanning out and surrounding the master Sabretooth, but it didn't take long for Sabretooth to start the ass kicking, throwing Blenda across the arena, but yet again the rest of Swarm couldn't really do anything, to the point that the arena spikes simply decided to explode out of pure frustration. They took off like rockets! With that and the damage to the floor flipper, I really think it's time for a new arena. Sabretooth used the floor flipper to toss Blenda but got caught in it itself, so their strategy kind of failed as they got flipped, but Blenda is invertible anyway, so that move wasn't effective. I did like the tactic of Swarm using the floor flipper to self right Rubber Duck. It was a cheeky tactic, but it paid off. Sabretooth lost some control points by driving into the CPZ where they took some minor damage from Shunt, and that's time wasted that they could have been using to further attack Swarm. It ultimately didn't matter though, as what was left of the cluster bot was stuck on the flame pit, leaving Sabretooth to go through to the 10-way. So at least that gives hope to Gabe and the team, as well as the person who had a Sabretooth birthday cake made for them. Yeah, that's that's real. That's a real thing. And I am in no way jealous. Jealous at, at all. No. Next fight. Next fight. I genuinely did not see this coming. Apollo began the fight by approaching Behemoth at a slower speed, which allowed them better control to get in under the scoop and flip them. After recovering in the CPZ, Apollo flipped Behemoth again, and at this point, I'm just waiting for the out of the arena flip. Behemoth then managed a lucky hit and toppled Apollo, but followed up that attack by chasing them and ramming Apollo into the pit button. Behemoth was showing bucket loads of aggression and control by forcing them into the CPZ and then into the sidewall. Apollo managed to self ride and again managed to toss Behemoth and yet again I'm waiting for this final out of the arena flip but it doesn't happen. Behemoth attacks Apollo from the side, exposing its ground clearance, and yet again tossed them toward a CPZ. And it turns into this bizarre tennis match where the robot on top keeps switching between Apollo and Behemoth. Both teams keep using the same tactics and get the same results. Behemoth is briefly attacked by Dead Metal, and finally Anthony decides to change tactics and instead rams Apollo toward the pit, flips it, and the momentum carries the 8th Wars champion into the pit. 
Time slows down. The world stands still. Did we just see what we thought we just saw? Did Behemoth just defeat a former UK champion to mark its place in the grand final? It did! Anthony goes understandably nuts. He deserves this after fighting for so long, while Dave has the same look on his face as everyone else watching the fight. This was a brilliant battle with such an unexpected ending. With their high part flipper, Apollo have turned into wheelie big cheese in that they flip themselves entirely over with each attack. The trouble is they lose control and CO2 when they do that as they have to right themselves and that played a big part in how they lost. While I thought the whole round robin setup from the 8th Wars and 9th Wars was okay, I do prefer this new fight format for the 10th Wars. Giving the losers of the first battles another chance to fight and come back again is a great idea as it means they don't just have one fight then go home. It also takes the pressure off the Roboteers as they don't have to rush to fix their robot for fight after fight in this same episode. And the production design has also been improved and tweaked for the better. The red hazard markings around the edge of the pits really helps define them during the overhead eagle cam shots. They removed the lasers from the top of the arena, which I don't really miss all that much. The Fog of War seems like they just reused the smoke cannons from the 8th and 9th Wars when the teams were introduced. I think this is more to make the show visually exciting than to be an effective arena hazard, as no one can see a thing, including the house robot drivers and the audience. And okay, fair enough. If the spikes now act as missile launchers in every episode, then I'm officially backing them from now on. I also caught them using the track Mars the Bringer of War from War of the Worlds when the house robots entered the arena, which is a nice callback to Extreme 1 as the competitors were introduced using a remixed version of that song. Also, Angela referenced RefBot during the Iron Man suit section, so it's nice knowing that the show is starting to acknowledge the past. But seriously, what is going on with that voiceover guy who introduces all the robots? He sounds mental this year. Even more mental than he did last year. I mean, if you need someone new, you could get that Peter Dixon guy that does the Axe Factor. I mean, you know, something like Apollo, Flipper, Behemoth, Titanium Scoop. You know, like something like that. I mean, if you can't get him, I'm available, you know, just saying. In the end, this is easily one of the best episodes of Robot Wars I've ever seen. There wasn't a dull fight, the visuals and music have been improved further, and the editing is sharper, giving it a fantastic pace. It was excellent entertainment from start to finish. But what did you think of this week's heat? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What was your favourite fight? What was your least favourite fight? Who are you looking forward to seeing fight next week? Let me know in the comments. And while you're there, and if you're new to my channel, why not hit subscribe and tap the bell icon as well for some notifications. And also you can follow me on all of these lovely social media sites that you see before you. The links to all of them are in the description below. And also a special shout out to Mike from Mr. Psycho 2 for agreeing to be in my stupid, silly little sketch at the start of the video. It was a lot of fun to film and it was also a pain in the ass to edit. But hopefully it was worth it. Anyway folks, take care and until next week, bye bye.